So we're back at it today, launching on this podcast, a beautiful morning out here in Beverly Hills. And today we got Dr. Neil. How's it going, man? How's your morning been so far? Hey, it's been great. It's, it's been, been great. great. Thanks for having me. You bit, did you already like have some appointments before we got here? Uh, usually Fridays, I leave it for really big cases or if I have to catch up on things. And so I blocked out the schedule for you guys. Okay. Man. So yeah. feeling special out here, man. Yeah. I appreciate that. <laughs> so tell us a little bit of, uh, about what you do. Everyone, our audience, obviously, and your audience wants to know a little bit about what you do here in the office. So go ahead and go into depth about that. Yeah, definitely. So uh, I'm a cosmetic dentist. In Beverly Hills, uh, a lot of people know me because I worked on your brother. Mm -hmm. um, I worked with Yvette, too. Um, so I'm a cosmetic dentist, also a general dentist as well, uh, located in Beverly Hills. And, uh, you know, I do the thing out here. So you do, I, you're, so we did see you do, like, more veneers. Is that, like, your, is that the only thing Spe you do? Is that no, your specialty? I, it, yeah, I get that question a lot. So I specialize in cosmetic dentistry, which means, like, a lot of veneers, a lot of crowns, a lot of aesthetic work. But I get a lot of questions of, like, is that the only thing you do? No, I do everything. I do general dentistry. Um, I even do oral surgery in my office. Oh, okay, okay. So if we're looking for a dentist, you can be our dentist. Yeah. Of course. I need, I need some, <laughs> I need some work in my teeth. <laughs> I, I need some work in my teeth. <laughs> we got our insurance cards. What's up? <laughs> uh, yeah, so cool. tell us how this uh, passion came about. When did you decide you wanted to get into the industry? Yeah, so um, from a really young age, I knew that I wanted to be some kind of doctor. Mm -hmm. I knew it because I, I just liked, you know, like helping people. I like taking care of people. Um, so from a young age, I knew that's what I wanted to do. But also when I was really young, I was really into drawing. I was really into, the, like, art and, um, you know, I, di I didn't just want to be like that like general da doctor. Da Vinci, it, what, what was the guy name? The, the, one, the one that does the drawings in Italy? Picasso? Or wait, what are you is talking about? Is it, <laughs> ah, fuck, I forgot. <laughs> is it Da Vinci? No, Michelangelo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, wanted to be a Michelangelo. I, hey, I loved sketching when I was younger. So, you know, I knew that whatever I wanted to do, uh, I wanted to combine that passion with, you know, like my love of like helping people, mm -hmm. right? So, like, from a from an early age, uh, you know, like, and I was kind of thinking, like, maybe, like, plastic surgery would be cool, mm, you yeah. know? Um, but not so much, like, the plastic surgery that you kind of, like, you, you see nowadays. Yeah, right? yeah, you know, yeah. You know what's crazy? He's like, he's like, I like to draw really good. Maybe I'll do plastic surgery. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm like wait, wait, that transition went like this. I was like, wait, so wait. That, so that went from, like, all right, I like drawing. And then as I was getting older, right, and I was like, okay, what kind of doctor do I want to be? You're like, plastic okay. surgeron. Yeah. It, it, it must have been that precision that you had with, yeah. what you, with the drawing because, obviously, like, you must have been really good at, like, Sketching things. Oh, or dude, I loved I yeah. love drawing and sketching, okay, like okay. cartoon characters, oh, okay. stuff, yeah. stuff like that. You know, um, and you know, like as the years went by, and it kind of started, you know, like getting an identity and, and of what I wanted from life and what I wanted to do. That's when I decided, like, you know what, I want to be a dentist, but not just any dentist. I want to be a cosmetic dentist. Mm. You know, like um, for me, there's no greater reward and no better feeling than being able to change somebody's life. By giving them the power to smile, the confidence of smiling. Like you guys take it for granted uh, when you're able to smile, and it's not a big deal to you. But there's people out there that they they are really insecure about smiling. That's me. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> swear. Right smile now. at the camera. Let's see the comments. What the comments say? Is he got a good smile? You think so? No, I hate my smile. <laughs> He's smiling awkwardly. I right think now. I think He's because like, the the reason why I hate it is because when I was a uh, um, oh, fuck. I think I was like twelve, ten. We were playing racquetball, okay. and um, I mean, I was already planning to get braces because like they're a little crooked, mm -hmm. and because my tooth already had grown, right? Yeah. So we we're playing racquetball, and I'm running to hit the the ball. I didn't see the wall, and I just boom crashed right into it. This tooth right here split in half. And I was like, that's it. You thought you were this the, shit is the, not going to grow back. You thought, you thought you were the ball or what? Dude, I was, I, was, I was fucking devastated for, for a know minute. What? That, that actually reminds me of a story that uh, when I was in, like, uh, elementary school, one of my best friends, you know, we used to play pickup games of basketball mm -hmm. and whatnot, right? And we were playing basketball, and he fell straight on his face. And he broke <sighs> his two front teeth. And uh, he was crying, and he just didn't look the same. Like, his face was all cut up. His two front teeth <sighs> were cracked. <sighs> 
And he was really, really, really upset about it. And I remember from a young age, I was like, I wish I could do something like to fix. help him. Mm -hmm. To fix it. Because yeah. he never, you know, like you know him one way. And then he goes and he breaks his front two teeth. And now this is what he looks like. And he was really upset about that. So I remember from a young age, like, that's, I wish I could do something about that. <laughs> that's crazy yeah. how it goes back that far. Even before you were like what you are now, like you had these thoughts in your head and that's why you got where you're at that's crazy I, that transition I think, I think a lot of things in life you know really uh stem from like your childhood oh yeah for sure yeah you know, like your, your perception even like when patients come to my office and like i hate the dentist and i'm like oh, oh. i haven't heard that one before <laughs> hey did you ever hate it when you had to go to the dentist i hated the weights <laughs> yeah the yeah. weights i just didn't like the dentist hey like, talking about dentist when was the last time you went to the dentist um he's like 10 years ago like four months ago because the you? daily well the when they clean the the teeth every what six months, hey, that's what they tell me. Hey, I'm proud of you, Oscar. Is <laughs> it, when you say, like, how, like how, what is a recommended thing that? Yeah, you it, it, it depends, but uh, like anywhere from three to six months. You know, typically Damn. most people six months, but you know if you have a lot going on, anywhere mm -hmm. three to four months. Hey, as far as teeth, like, is there like certain people that have more sensitive teeth that are more likely to get cavities, even though they take care of their teeth yeah there's definitely like a uh, genetic you know i feel like i'm like it. super cavity sensitive even though like i'm flossing fucking brushing my teeth and next thing you know i go to a doctor oh yeah uh you got a cavity i'm like fuck <laughs> like, like come I, on man. Like, oh, man, I don't even you're kidding candy. me my brother at least is i don't even think he has a cavity bro like i'm it's hey, crazy hey he has a good smile yeah he does <laughs> i'm gonna have to be on that level soon <laughs> oh you said it yes sir um anyways Tell us a little bit about your struggles. Have you struggled, I mean, getting into the industry? Like, what struggles would you say um, you kind of, like, look back and you're like, damn, like, I got over that hurdle? Oh, I mean, you know, I think uh, most people in life, they deal with some kind of struggle, right? Yeah. Uh, for me personally, it's uh, the path of becoming a dentist is very difficult. And mm -hmm. I think that most dental students would agree like right now they're in dental school and they're like, Oh my God, I have my board exams. I have my requirements. I got to study. It's hell. Um, and so it's really, really tough when you go through dental school, even getting into dental school is, is really, really difficult. And then, you know, I think maybe, um, when you're in dental school, you think, okay, once I graduate, it's going to be <laughs> easy. And it's not because I remember that when I graduated, I was trying to find a job and, um, you know, the first step is that you go to associate in an office, meaning that you go and you work in somebody else's dental practice, right? So I was applying for jobs and stuff, and uh, the number one thing is they want experience. Mm. So it's like, well, how... So you're you at get, the bottom of like, the list. Right. Like, how do I, I get experience? How do I get it's experience like, if I don't even get the chance, yeah. right? So... That, I mean, that was a struggle. You think that you're going to go from dental school and you're going to start working and you're going to start making money and, you know, you've been just studying and, and you've been a student all your life. Like, you go four years undergraduate and then you go four years dental school and, you know, when you're an undergrad or even when you go to grad school, you're not making any money. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're kind of, like, looking forward to, like, finally I'll get a taste of something. Yep. Whereas, like, all my friends that graduated um, from undergrad and they got their degrees, they're already working jobs, they're making money, they're starting families. And I'm sitting here eating PB and J sandwiches and Shit. protein shakes. You know what I mean? The the Maruchan. The, <laughs> so, oh so, so, man, yeah. well, I'm trying to stay away from that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, that's just way too high in salt. Yeah, 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 it is. It really is. <laughs> you know? yeah. um, so I just uh, during dental school, I was just having PB and J sandwiches and a lot of protein shakes. And I know a lot of my classmates remember me from dental school just just chugging back the protein shakes and working out. Hey. That, was, that was the only thing I got. Yeah. The only thing I could afford at the yeah. time. Uh, so that, you know, that was tough and getting through that whole thing and then finally graduating and like, all right, now how do I get a job? So, um, when I graduated, uh, luckily I had one of my classmates who had an older brother that was a dentist in Santa Barbara and, uh, my, my, my classmate, he was going to specialize, but his older brother who had the practice was looking for an associate. So he gave me the opportunity, mm. you know, he said, you know, I'm looking for uh, like a new grad to come in like three days a week and, you know, work. And he was kind of like, you know, expanding his business and all that kind of stuff. So I'm like, OK, this is a good way for me to get my foot in the door, start gaining some experience. At the same time, in Beverly Hills, there's a plastic surgeon. Literally, I can see his building from across my office. And uh, he was looking to expand his business and add a dental side 
to it. It's, a, it's mm. an interesting concept, right? You have a plastic surgeon who also wants to do like cosmetic dentistry. So he built out uh, a cosmetic practice and he hired me to come and work like two days a week. So at this point, I'm like, okay, I have a job offer in Santa Barbara and one in Beverly Hills. And um, I just graduated. And so I started working three to four days in Santa Barbara. And I started working two days in Beverly Hills. And um, I didn't have a place to live because, you know, like I moved from my apartment in downtown Mm because I went to USC. And um, what I was doing was basically every paycheck that I was making was going towards staying at the Courtyard Marriott in Santa Barbara oh, so, I could, so I could just get my, you know, like my foot in the door yeah. and gain that experience. And then, um, you know, living at my parents' house and uh, working two days a week in Beverly Hills. So I was staying in Santa Barbara and working in Beverly Hills, and I did that for about like three years. Mm. So what's, my, what's the distance from that, like from Beverly Hills to Santa Barbara? Uh, about 90 miles. Oh, shit. oh fuck. Yeah, so. Traffic? I mean, Oh yeah, of oh, course. Sh- yeah, of course. You know, it's it's horrible. How so long I, how long did you do that for? I did that for about three years. Damn. Yeah. Consistency. Yes. Yeah. So I was just trying to build because no you know, excuses. A lot of you know a lot of uh, like jobs out there were looking for like two years, three years mm-hmm. minimum experience to you know to hire out here. So I'm like, all right, well I got to gain the experience. So I was saving my paychecks and uh, all that was going towards hotel rooms and the other other bit of it, I was saving up to take courses. Take mm-hmm. continuing education courses because in dental school you you only learn so much and you got to keep learning I think. you have to you yeah. have to i, I think mean, that's with everything you know yeah. like for training like yeah. uh, us being trainers you got things keep always learning. evolve man oh definitely yeah. like if you think you know it all right now then you're, you're, you're setting done. yourself up for failure yeah, yeah. That, that's totally it i mean the only way to you know stay ahead of the game is to continue to learn if you're trying to open a business you better believe that the next guy is trying to get you out of business Mm -hmm. so he's working harder than you he's learning more than you and so you know if you're looking to be successful you constantly have to learn so you can't get comfortable you got to just keep working Mm -hmm. no definitely not you cannot be comfortable so i was spending my money on hotel rooms continuing (laughs) education courses because in dental school they don't teach you about veneers you'll be lucky if you do veneers in dental school Mm -hmm. so a lot of people ask me like how did you learn about veneers well i read a lot i took a lot of courses um and just practice 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 that's, that's how you get ahead. so once you become like the dentist there's nothing about veneers that you do so like again you said how do you learn that it's like a separate course that you gotta mm-hmm. like pay for or you just gotta like how do you actually learn that man like, yeah it's it's uh it, that's a good question so you know you can like you can youtube videos about it oh uh, <laughs> youtube you hey, can youtube it you could read uh textbooks about it you could take courses about it and there's courses that range from free to like you pay like 10 g's and and you go and you take it um you know i would say that the best courses i've taken i paid for but the other thing that i recommend is that in, in with anything in business or in life that if there's somebody that you see that you are like oh my god his work is phenomenal or like i like his business model or whatnot you find a mentor or somebody that you look up to and you try to learn from those people so there were like you know a certain dentist and not necessarily dentists here but dentists in other countries and i'm like oh my god their work is phenomenal you know so i would reach out to them i would reach out to them on instagram i would reach out to them on facebook and um and ask them if I could learn from them. Uh, I'd be willing to fly out to Brazil, you know, to go learn from those guys. Um, fly out to Brazil? Why not? Yeah, why not? Yeah, why low not? weekend, low weekend. Yeah, yeah, I don't know about like weekend. I like, I, like to make, I, I like to make it a, a two-week trip. Yeah, right. two-week yeah. trip. Uh, but, you know, like, I, I, would, I would just reach out to people, and I would, I would find these courses that, you know, like certain people that I would look up to, and I would think, that, oh, my God, their, their work is really good. I would reach out to them, and I would pay for their courses. So, so you actually hit, like, certain dentists or people that you like say you look you looked up to and then they'd reach back out to you and be like sure like come down or how did how did that work yeah. most of the time did you get like so, unread, left on red <laughs> oh, i hate that listen there were, there were like uh i remember early on there was like 20 30 dentists right um throughout the world that i was like wow their work is phenomenal like how the hell do they do that and uh i reached out to all of them all of them I'm like why not mm-hmm. you know like you, you know I know it's cliche, you got nothing but to lose. Yeah, you have nothing to lose. Yeah. You know, so um, I reach out to them, and you'd be surprised. A lot of them actually responded back to me, and I would pick their brains about anything from like the photography to 
how they achieved such a result. And I would just ask, ask, ask. And I think they respected that because, mm -hmm. you know, they saw like, you know, here's a kid who's, who's really passionate and interested about learning about, you know, um, trying to become the best at what he does. And I really respected their work. So, you know, when they see that somebody's really interested and passionate about what mm -hmm. they do, they, they wanted to lend a helping hand. And nobody starts off being at the top. True. Everybody works from, you know, they start somewhere. So they've all been in my position. And they see maybe like, you know, a lot of themselves and me reaching out and asking these questions. So they would reach back out to me. Yeah, they see that. Not all of them, yeah, but some, yeah, you know, but they see the potential. Yeah, they see, yeah. The, well, yes. they see that, that you're ambitious with it. Yeah. Like you're like reaching out, you're going, you know, because a lot of people, it's crazy, probably wouldn't reach out. No. And it gives them that like, oh, damn, like I know I my work's good, but like this person's actually reaching out mm -hmm. to want to learn from me. So it gives you like, I don't know, when you're on the other side, it makes you probably feel like, you're doing something right. Why not help them out? You know what I'm saying? Give them a, I yeah. just pass the knowledge down, you know? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So I, I mean, I, I really appreciated that because you didn't have to take the time to do that, yeah. but I appreciate, you know, like any opportunity somebody gives me to learn or anything like that. I, I appreciate that. So did you actually go to Brazil? Did you, did you go to that? <laughs> or, no, you know, I, 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 well, you know, I was supposed to, and then the pandemic hit. Oh, oh okay. So, it, oh, so this was oh, recent. This you actually reached out to, to somebody to go to Brazil. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, so what ended up happening was he ended up starting an online course, you know, like a lot of courses in dentistry are hands-on mm -hmm. a lot of them are online too, but now everything switched to online, like zoom, whatnot. Um, and so he's like, look, I'm starting this online course and I want you to take care of like the U S part of it because he speaks Portuguese, mm. you know, he's in Brazil. So, um, I started working with him on that. Oh, it's something man, that, that that's not a lot of people know, but you know, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, there you go. Uh, so you're pretty much doing, you're going to be doing courses then. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So this is, this is a guy that I really looked up to and I really picked his brain and then we just kind of started sharing each other's work and, you know, we developed a, uh, a friendship from that. And Can then you, what's his name? Can you say his name? Or yeah. Yeah. Name? Felipe Becerra. Okay. Okay. Yeah. He's a, he's a good guy and he's a really, really talented dentist, you know, Man. and, and something, someone you look up to, you've seen for a while before, like before, or as you were starting your, your dentistry. Oh, I followed him for a while. Yeah. Okay. And then I was blown away because he does everything by hand. Like, you know, a lot of veneers and stuff nowadays, you have like a dental ceramist that makes everything out of porcelain. Mm. Um, but he does everything by hand. <laughs> I'm like, damn, that's another level. Oh, so he makes the actual, he does it right there. The veneers. He does, he does, uh, like bonded veneers. So like, uh, composite veneers, they're not made out of porcelain. They're made out of composite material, but he does everything by hand. I'll show you guys pictures. Of you guys how really how long do these veneers, like, what's, like, say, if I were to get some today, right? Mm. And then, like, how? We're doing, <laughs> after, after this. We're doing, after this. I'm, I'm just going to get veneers after this. I'm going to get veneers after this. He's no, going to so, drop a cool, like, 30K. <laughs> <right>. <laughs> so, so you get them, right? And then how long would you have to, what's the process of, like, coming back and getting them like like how many appointments yeah, yeah how, how long is the process yeah what's like the say process? oscar came today he, he had an appointment with you he was going to get veneers like how was how was when it? would i have to come back to yeah so the, the, the whole process typically start to finish takes about a month okay but that doesn't you know in it, it depends like we have a lot of patients from out of the country we have a lot of patients from out of state so we try to accommodate them as best as we can um so typically it takes about like four appointments mm -hmm. four appointments i would say you know, sometimes a little bit more, uh, but four appointments, and then you, you, have a, you have a brand new smile. And after that, do you, um, when do you have to, like, come back again, like, get them touched up? or? Yeah, so I tell my patients, like, look, after, you know, like, I, I'm done with the veneers doesn't mean that you're, like, done, done, right? Yeah. Because, you know, you got to treat them like your natural teeth. Mm -hmm. So you got to come back regularly for your checkups, your cleanings, your x-rays. You know, there's a, there's a a lot of maintenance involved in that. Yeah. You know, just because you get veneers doesn't mean you can't get cavities. It doesn't mean that they can't break, you know? So we have to make sure that everything is looking good. You have to brush, you have to floss, you have to do all of that. You're not in the clear, you know, mm. you have a perfect smile. And now you, you know, you never see the dentist again. So, um, I tell them to come back regularly, you know, for the six month checkup or, you know, three so, or four months. So checkup. I know that there's a couple of ways that people, I guess, put veneers on. I know there's one that they shave your teeth down. Yeah. It's the, yeah, the, the, the number one stigma. Yeah, and then there's the other one. I don't know. Like I said, like, how does that work? Like, what's the difference from like doing that to not doing that? Yeah. Um, so I mean, I think I'd be creeped out. <laughs> like, shave your damn teeth. Yeah. You a lot, a lot of you look like a little shark. Out. You look like a little shark. <laughs> Well, so, like, a lot of people go and watch YouTube, right? Okay. And so they, they go and they see, like, these, uh, like, little, like, toothpick teeth. And they're like, is that what you're going to do with my teeth? And I'm like, no, I'm, 
Uh, you know, I, I mentioned earlier about like going and, you know, you could watch on YouTube and learn on YouTube and, and whatnot. But what you have to understand is that every dentist is different. Okay. Every dentist practices by a different like principle, mm -hmm. philosophy, um, has a different technique. I mean, everybody practices dentistry differently. So, you know, what I do is on social media, I show off the tooth preparations because I want people to be as informed as possible about the process and how I do my work at least. Mm. So for example, so you're being very tra transparent. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Um, the most important thing is trust. The most important thing is trust. I sit there with each patient and I make sure I answer every single question. If a patient asks me to show them their teeth in the middle of a veneer procedure, I will show them their teeth. Sure. Sure. You have to know what, what yeah, you know, like yeah. what's going mm -hmm. on with your mouth. I want them to see everything, and I put a lot of that stuff on social media so that a lot of my followers or whoever's interested can see what the process is like. The more the patient knows, the more they're informed, the better it is for both of us. You know, so I try to make sure that there's no like stone unturned. Mm -hmm. You know, in terms of answering questions and and, and uh, my patients and, um, and people in general being informed about everything, mm -hmm. like with your brother, right? Yeah. Um, you know, like I recorded the, the tooth preparations, um, and he even saw it and he was like, Oh my God, like, you know, my teeth look pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. So it just depends, you know, a lot on the dentist, you know, some dentists are more aggressive than others. I tend to be a little bit more conservative. Uh, and also just like the clinical situation, right? Like, so if you have a patient that has like existing veneers of crowns, has existing fillings, has cavities, and obviously like you got to remove more. Right. So if you have like cavities, I got to remove the cavity. If you have existing feelings, I got to remove that. If you already had your teeth prepared by another dentist and you have veneers and crowns. Or, or for example, say like this one. I think, I don't know how they did the process. They, I'm pretty sure they shaved it down after it was. Maybe a little bit. Yeah. But it's not bad. So if they take it out and then you put a. Veneer, you know, or yeah. you, can you still put, can you still put a veneer? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So how, how much. Oh, so how, thinking about yeah. What, what's the, what's the cost on this man like how does it work does insurance yeah. cover yeah. <laughs> <laughs> does, does insurance cover you know unfortunately or do is there payment plans on this payment. like yeah th those are great questions so yeah. unfortunately most insurance companies do not cover cosmetic procedures okay. mm -hmm. i mean like out in the blue and, and you know my girls in the front they'll they'll have a better answer for you rarely do they ever do that um but you know for the most part they don't cover cosmetic procedures um, as far as the cost, it just depends on who you go to and where you go to, you know? So, uh, I tell my patients, look, like if you're on a budget, you know, like you have to be weary of where you go and what you're getting done. Right. Uh, because I get a lot of patients that come to me and they went and they, you know, got veneers that were like, I don't know, like $800 a tooth and there was a lot of damage done to those teeth. Or they don't look and they authentic, look, right? And, and they're they, like chiclets. Yeah, and they, and, they, and, they, and they look like chiclets. Yeah. Yeah, you know, they're not happy with it. And so, you know, like, you get what you pay for. Yeah. Really, right. that's what it is. Yeah. You get what you pay for. So if it's something that you're interested in, what I recommend to everybody is do your research. Do your, you know, learn about the process. Learn about the procedure. Research different doctors. I mean, I encourage that, you know. Go, like, you know, you get a consultation with me, you get a consult with somebody else, and ultimately go with your guy. Go with who you like. He's flexing right now. He's like, mm -hmm. yeah, go, go check the other guy. And then yeah. you just come back to me when you're <laughs> going to fix him. You're going to come back to me eventually. Listen, you, you got to have options. Oh, yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. You, know I mean? you got to have options. Like, a, a lot of patients come to my office not just because of my work, but because of the vibe and because of how they feel, their connection with me, the connection with my staff. Mm -hmm. That's that's the, the number one priority. Yeah is building that relationship and, and, and that connection with the patient. So, you know, I encourage anyone who's ever thinking of doing anything, whether it be like getting veneers or getting plastic surgery or just anything in general, you know, you should go and get multiple opinions. You should go and check out multiple people and see who you feel comfortable with and mm -hmm. who you feel like you trust because trust is the most important yeah. thing in a patient-doctor relationship. So uh, I know like, um, like with the whole social media thing, mm -hmm. um, like when did... When did you kind of bloom? When did you bloom where you're like, damn, there's too many direct messages. So you always use social media as, a, as yeah. when you started your dentistry? Like, no. No? No. I hate social media. Okay. I still hate social oh. media. Um, <laughs> Business cards? <laughs> flyers? Yeah. Fake, fake accounts? On the cards? Man. It's got all the fake accounts. That's why I hate social media. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Oh my god, the fake accounts kill me. You know, if, if somebody like <laughs> makes a fake account of you on Facebook yeah. and you report it, yeah. they won't take it down. Oh yeah, they won't. Hey, they you won't you, you have to tell all your friends report this page. Man. I'm like, that's crazy. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm reaching out to you. So you made a fake profile. Take it down. No. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, you know how the social media thing started? So, uh, you know, social media has really blown up. What in the last like four or five years? I would yeah. say. Yeah. Um. So you know. I'm a very private person, but when you go on social media, you're really putting yourself oh. out there. Oh yeah, you, I mean, for sure, right? And people really start digging in there. And um, don't tag me on that photo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. They they start like looking into your family. Uh, uh, they start looking. Hey, that's into crazy, everything. huh? When I, you're being like, when you man, put everything out there, man. I had people make fake profiles of my dad of my sister Jeez, of okay. like of my cousins i'm like come on you have nothing better to yeah. do you know and it's like one thing if you do it for me but it's my family yeah, you know what i mean yeah, yeah damn so i was like um really like weary of getting out there in social media mm -hmm. but you know now social media is the number one way to really get your message or your work or whatnot out there to the a world. large spectrum and group of people everyone's on their phone so all the time all Literally. The, all the time. So I remember when, you know, I bought my practice, I was like, all right, well, I got to start doing the social media thing. So that's when I really started doing it was when I when I bought this practice. And I remember, I have a practice consultant too. I remember when I started doing this, I'm like, oh, I feel so awkward doing this. Like when you think about <sighs> it, you're like literally holding your phone and you're talking to yourself and you're looking at yourself <laughs> at your phone and you're like, I look weird. It's or a weird angle. I sound weird. <laughs> I sound it's, a weird, weird. it's a weird angle. Like, <laughs> yeah. But like, you get used to it. You get used yeah, to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. So I first started off, I remember telling my practice consultant, like, oh, I don't like doing this. Like, this is just not me. I'm so private and I feel so awkward doing this. And then, you know, but unfortunately, like, this is what it is now, nowadays. Like, you yeah. have to put yourself out there. You have to get yourself out on social media and um, have, like, an online presence. So I started forcing myself to mm -hmm. do it. Um, and I would, like, practice, right? I would practice. Like, I wouldn't record, but I'd hold the phone like this, you know, and I'd start talking to it. And I'd just keep doing take after take after take. Just practicing the best position. Where's my best look? Yeah. You know, right we all got that one side where we're just like, all right, D definitely really good. yeah de definitely <laughs> no, honestly um so i i just started like practicing with it and the more i started doing it the more comfortable mm -hmm. i became with it at first i was like oh, i'm a little robotic yeah. you know like whatever and then i'm like you know what screw it i don't care anymore i'm just gonna be myself i'm just gonna show off my personality yeah. i'm gonna i'm gonna show off my staff's personality because they all have personality yeah every single one of them that's cool and that's a good thing and, and here in this uh where you're at you got a team of other people that also like do veneers other doctors or you're the only doctor i'm the only one here oh okay so. I'm, I'm i'm the only cosmetic dentist here that's not to say maybe down the line uh, that w wouldn't be a possibility. Like, I've had a lot of um, dental students and other dentists reach out to me about, like, either shadowing me or wanting to work in my practice. And, um, you know, it's like, especially now with the pandemic, it's so hard. It's so hard because we limit the amount of patients and, you know, interactions between people in the office. So, you know, maybe, like, once things start going back to normal, that might become a, a possibility. But I'm the only one. And you, it, now, like, all my patients only want me to work on them. Oh, well, I mean, yeah, you, know? you have the – it's like they know you by you. Like, they want to work – get the work done by you. Yeah, right. Exactly. So um, how was that process be before you had – because this is your place, right? You you're, yep. you run this. You run the show here. Yeah. Right? So what was the process before you coming into this position? Like, I know you said that you worked with – uh you know, other dentists, the two, mm -hmm. like the Santa Barbara and then the Beverly Hills one. And mm -hmm. when did it switch over to you doing your own thing? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's a great question. I think that, you know, most people, when they start working for other people, as they continue to work from job to job or company to company, they start getting frustrated, right? When you can't do things the way that you want. So, for example, um, when I started associating for other dentists, they tell you, this is the dental lab we're going to use. This is the ceramics we're going to use. These are the materials we're going to use. Um, you, know, you work on their budget and how they want to run their business, right? Yeah. And they, in a way, like, you know, they're a dentist themselves. They want to tell you how to do dentistry. So it's like my vision for dentistry is completely different from the guy that I work for. And it gets to a point where you become frustrated with that. 
And when you're being like kind of like capped or limited with how you want to go about doing your profession, you think to yourself, well, the only way to do what I want is to open my own practice. So it got to a point where, you know, like I worked for different practices and whatnot. Um, and, you know, I just grew frustrated. I'm like, you know what? I want to do really high end work and I want to use the best materials and the best ceramics and I don't care about budget. Mm-hmm. You know, because uh, I got a black card. I don't need this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you this much: I did not have a black card. <laughs> I was dreaming big. Uh, man. Was, so, uh, hey, man, I was dreaming big. But that's and, good. But you know, I was like, look, if if that is what it takes, right? Like, if I have to spend so much money to achieve a certain level of quality, and to get the results that I want, it's totally worth it. Because in the end. That will pay itself off. So yeah. these places you were working at, they weren't doing that kind of work. No. They were just normal dentistry offices? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not necessarily like cosmetic. Uh, maybe with the exception of, you know, the plastic surgeon I worked with in Beverly Hills. Because obviously, there's, you know, there's yeah. a lot of cosmetic components to that. But, you know, what I'd be like, oh, I want to use like this drill bit and I want to use this impression material and I want to go with this ceramic too expensive, too expensive, too expensive. Yeah. Commercial. They're yeah. Look, you're like only commercial. as good as what you work with, Yeah. Mm-hmm. you know, whether it be the materials, whether it be the ceramics or whether it be your assistant or front desk. What, what made you want to work like high end, high end? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Was it just being around this area? Like, did you grow up in this area? No. <laughs> no, I did not. Um, yeah, down the street, Beverly Hills. I grew yeah, up. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I didn't grow up in Beverly Hills. I grew up um, in Sherman Oaks, so okay. that's that's in the valley. Okay, um, it's not a bad area, but yeah. it is, but it's not Beverly Hills. Yeah. Um, what made me decide? I I think I always envisioned myself as wanting to be the best at whatever I did, mm-hmm. and you know when I thought about okay, cosmetic dentistry, or when anybody thinks of cosmetic anything, where do they think of? Like. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, LA. Well, <laughs> Dr. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah, that's what <laughs> I was about to say. What other show? Nine hundred two one zero. Yeah, you think yeah. you think of Beverly Hills? What was the other right? show botched? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> shows, you know what I'm saying? So like, it's all, yeah. yeah, and it's all in Beverly yeah. Hills, right? Yeah. So you know, like when when I was looking to buy my own practice, um, I had opportunities to buy a practice in San Diego, right? And I love San Diego. Yeah. I, I did my undergraduate in San Diego. Okay. There you go. But that's always been my dream to actually live in San Diego. But you know. I passed up those opportunities because I knew ultimately for what I wanted to do to be the best at what I did, the kind of dentistry I wanted to do, San Diego wasn't the right city for me. So I'm like, I have to go in Beverly Hills. It's tough. Let me tell you, Um, having a practice in Beverly Hills, buying one, you don't find anything here, whether it be like building out a space or buying an existing practice, you don't find anything here uh, because it's just, just so hard to find anything here so competitive here yeah. uh and in dental school they don't teach you anything about running a business running a business uh and if anyone is going to come out here and open a business they've already probably had another practice or another business somewhere else so they kind of have a feel for it so for a young guy starting out and you know opening it's a tough. business you're basically going straight to the deep end um and i remember that when He's i was straight to shark tank oh yeah. yeah but i figured this much you know what if i'm gonna do it I'm going to do it big. I'm going straight for my dreams. And I'm going to open it straight in Beverly Hills. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he went straight to Beverly there Hills. There you go. I'm, I'm Imagine going, opening my gym right in Beverly Hills first when say, I started. Like, say, what the hell? Yeah. Say, fuck it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, look, if you're going to put your mind to anything, you just got to go and do it. You know, don't half-ass it. So, um, you know, I found this practice, right? And I remember talking to one of the deans at USC about it. And just kind of running it by him, like, so what do you think of this practice? And blah, blah, blah. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a good practice, whatnot. And then um, after I bought the practice, I saw him again. I said, I bought the practice. And he goes, you did? And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, oh, my God. Honestly, I thought you were so goddamn crazy for – Buying a practice in Beverly Hills, you must have some big balls, man. I was like, yeah. I was like, he's like, I actually do. I was like, well, what you do technically. <laughs> I was like, well, what do you mean? And he goes, listen, I don't want to say anything, but for a young guy going straight to the most competitive and saturated place for cosmetic dentistry, that takes a lot of guts. Yeah, and I'm like, and you're telling me this after the fact, not when I first asked you before I bought the practice, right? Um, so you know, I was like, look. 
sometimes you gotta you gotta be a little crazy and you take the risk. Gotta do it. Now, you now, gotta do it. Now, how old were you when you when you bought the practice? Um, I was thirty. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And you've been here five years. Five years now. Yep. Damn. Well, yeah. For Dennis, that's pretty much young because you were just when did you graduate? Uh, and, like, I graduated you? eight years ago. So you were twenty seven. Yeah. So yeah, that was that's pretty. Yeah, the, the process is what like eight years <laughs> just to and then to just go straight to like I'm going my first visit to Beverly Hills. Yeah, like, damn. Uh, yeah, I went straight for it. So did you? I mean, were you as you were working at these other places before you started this? I mean, you must have been pretty good at what you were doing already. Um, like I said, you know, I kind of used that opportunity to build my skill set. So I, like I said, I just saved my paychecks and took courses. I just took courses. I just built my skill set until I felt that I was to a point Come. where. Uh, so you, know, you're you're saying you good. saved paychecks. You saved hella money to get yourself going pretty much for the business. Right. Yeah. Mm. Right. Yeah. I mean, my money went towards staying in the hotel room, paying for CE courses and saving up for my business. That's where my money went to. Because you didn't have a, you actually, I mean, other than the, the, the hotel rooms, you didn't have a house. You didn't have an apartment. Nothing. nothing. It was just okay. Nothing. Yeah. I just, uh, once I graduated from UIC, I just moved all my stuff into storage. You were living very minimal, pretty much. Oh yeah, oh, man. I had, a, yeah. I, had a, I had a I had a carry on. That's all I had. I had a carry on. I went yeah, to. Yeah, you're gonna right. do that. I, say, I stayed be. in the courtyard, Marriott and Goleta. Um, racked up some points there because I was always <laughs> staying at that place. Everybody would be there, you know. Um, and it was lonely because I didn't know anybody there, so I would go by myself and I would like Thursday nights. I would like watch Thursday night. So football yeah, yeah. So you were technically by yourself the whole time. Whole like, time. There was no like. Friends around the area that you no. never really knew. I mean, nothing like family, nothing. It was just kind of like, I'm here, I'm taking this risk, and I'm. That's damn. it. Damn. That's Trey Savage right That's there. A, that was it, Savage. man. That was it. Jeez. Yeah, you got to get your, your foot in the door somehow. And it's just like, you know, you just kind of make the sacrifices. Everybody has their story, I guess, you know, when, when they're trying to start their damn. own business and whatnot. So. Tell us about your, your team you got here. I mean, oh I like the vibe. I came in here. I was like, oh, oh my God, my team. Lit. I love my team. I always post uh, my team on social media because I can't do this without my team. Mm -hmm. I, I can't I can't run the business. I can't do my dentistry. I, I can't do it without my team. Oh, yeah. So the, behind, like, you know, like the scenes, I mean, they're the ones that are doing everything. So I have my office manager, Gloria, who – um, you know, has literally been by my side since the day I graduated dental school. Okay. And then I have my treatment coordinator, Monica, who's, uh, is just absolutely amazing. And she's definitely a personality. Um, and then I have my assistants, uh, Rita and Barbara, who are phenomenal with, uh, the patient experience and they're just so amazing at what they do. And, uh, I have my hygienist Lynette who's been in the game, you know, for a while. And everybody that gets a cleaning from Lynette, like they will not go anywhere else because Lynette is so detailed and, and patient oriented. All my staff, every single one of them, they, they're, they're you know, like their customer service and the experience that they provide for my patients is, is just on another level. It was like the Chicago Bulls with Michael Jordan and the whole team. Yeah. Everybody played the role. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Jordan played it himself, right? Yeah. So I, I, I see you got the Jordans on. So I yeah. Said, That's yeah. why, right? You got the Jays on. Jordan yeah. on. Hey. 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 Lucky charm. I got Scotty Lucky Pippen over there. I got everything. <laughs> <That's what's laughs> the whole man. starting five. Yeah. I know that I have the absolute best team. I can say that with 100% confidence. I have the absolute best oh, yeah. team. I, 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 will, I will challenge anyone to try to say that they have a better team than me. Straight up. And that's the confidence it needs to take to be – who you are. Yeah, it, yeah, I mean, it didn't happen overnight, oh, yeah. but I assembled, you know, the, the right pieces, um, you know, that their vision, their, you know, like, they everything lines up with me and what my expectations are. And they work so hard, um, you know, they sacrifice so much, and they, they care so much about people. And, they, and, they, and, 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 you know, we all care so much about one another and, and, and you know, like, just executing – our our vision and, and really just holding that standard so and i think that reflects off of you man i think it, it comes from you because obviously just i guess by walking in meeting you right off the bat it's like we know exactly kind of 
how you are right off the bat. It's like that first impression. You came in, what's up, yeah. guys? You guys want this? You guys want that? Like, it was like, okay, Jeez. I like this guy already. You know what I'm saying? Uh, definitely. Like, we don't know what to expect. Same thing with you. You don't know what to expect when you first meet us. It's like, okay, well, yeah. and it's like, man, we got the vibe where I'm like, we feel comfortable with you, man. Well, like, you know, like, 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 you know, like attracts like, right? Yeah. Like, I met your brother, mm -hmm. and I met, you know, your sister-in-law, right? And they're really good people. Um, and, you know, like, you even, you know, talking to you beforehand, I mean, I know, like, where your guys' head is at and, you know, the kind of people that you are, and um, I really respect that. And so, you know, and, like, who you surround yourself with, obviously, yeah. too. Like, my team, you know, is a reflection of me. So, you know, like, uh, it's just... It ultimately, you know, when I open my practice, I'm like, look, I don't want my practice to be like any dental practice, right? Oh, no, it's, it's obvious. I came in and you got the music playing. I was yeah. Like, hey, like, it's a high beat, man. Oh, like, shit, is this the nightclub? Like, man, this could be my dentist place, man. Like, yeah. It's cool. Yeah, like, I like it. yeah, definitely. Like, I don't want, you know, yeah. like, I don't want people to walk in here and just be like, oh, I'm going to the dentist or yeah. as a typical yeah. dental experience. Like, I want my patients to come here, look forward to it, and have a good time. And we build those personal relationships with everybody the other day i had a patient that came in and you know i hadn't seen her i think since the pandemic started right and i asked her how she was doing about a particular thing small detail but i remembered it and i asked her how she was doing she was oh my god you remembered that i'm like of course i remember that you know because we genuinely care about every single person that walks through this door um and, you know, that that's really how I wanted my practice to be. When you go from business to business and you go from experience to experience, you learn what not to do. Mm -hmm. you, you remember the things that had a positive impact on you and you remember the things that had a negative impact on you. And especially when you're in the healthcare field. If you go into somewhere and you feel like they do not care about you, how does that make you feel? Yeah, yeah, of course. And I think that's where anywhere you go, whether you go to a gym, training with a client, uh, trainer or anything, man, like it's just the same thing. And I think I was going to ask the question of like, what do you, what is your edge that you think is stands you out from the crowd? And I think it's just obviously what you were explaining. Obviously, your work speaks for itself, but it's how you explain the situation right now. And I think that's what definitely, gives you the edge. Definitely. There's if you can make people come to your business and they leave with a positive experience, and you make them feel good about themselves, that is the number one key about a successful business. He's like, when they're done with their teeth, you're a sexy motherfucker. Go take <laughs> on the world now, man. Go take on the world, yeah. man. You know, like, I mean, it really it really is the patient experience. I, I mean, we know every single patient on a personal level, and we, we truly care about every single person that walks through this door. Damn. Damn. So what's, what's the, I know it might be too early to say, but, like, what's, the next couple of years down the line, like, do you want to do like, like more, like do more seminars? I know you're starting yeah, with that seminar stuff, helping other like dentists come up. Do you want to open another pra practice? Do you want to build a team in yeah. here? Like of other dentists. So, I mean, how, do, where, where's your yeah. mind at with that, man? Do you want to build a product? Do you want to build a toothpaste? Yeah. No, <laughs> hell no. <laughs> I'm not building any toothpaste, man. <laughs> yeah, um, mouthwash, toothpaste. New, yeah, a new kind of floss. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's interesting because in life you constantly have to evolve and adapt. We never thought over a year ago that we'd be in this position that we are in today. Mm -hmm. How the world has changed. Yeah. We're in the middle of a pandemic. How th I mean, you know, it, it's so crazy. So when things change in the world, you have to adapt and evolve accordingly to that. Um, you know, first and foremost, right, I have my own personal goals, right, of being the best that I possibly can be, not just professionally, but personally. Mm -hmm. And I have to keep working on that. And the way to do that is not to think of like going from A to Z and thinking five years from now, it's like, what am I going to achieve this year? And then the next year, what I always do every single new year, I swear to God, I've been doing this for like, oh my God, I would say at least 15 years. I Like New Year's Day, I sit down and I write all my goals for the new year. We're and just then, talking about that with, a, with all my with all my trainers at the gym. We're going to be doing that this Monday. Like, we're going to write down a plan for everybody to, to achieve because right. I feel like that makes sense. So Because the only way you're going to get to the end result is by doing it one step at a time. So if you say, like, this is where I want to be in five years, but you got to think of how you're going to get there exactly. in five years. And build that, that takes, bridge. Exactly. So you got to go and, and write that down year from year. So I do that every single year. And then I bring up my goals from the previous year, like the year that I just finished. And I, and I go and I see, okay, 
cross that out, cross that out, cross that out, cross it out. So um, as far as, you know, where I see uh, my practice, well, you know, we're continually looking to establish ourselves as the best and premier cosmetic dental practice in Beverly Hills. Shit. All right. Um, and that takes, yeah. that takes a lot of time. Yeah. It takes a lot of hard work. Um, and along the way, as things continue to grow and evolve, um, maybe I might bring another dentist onto my team, you know, but that's very, very, very tricky for me because like I said, I have a certain relationship with my patients yeah. for them to feel comfortable with somebody else, uh, is, is going to be hard. And they have a certain level of expectation in terms of like the kind of like result and treatment and whatnot they're going to receive. So I need and, to make sure. Yeah, Cause the name is at the end of the day, the name is on you. This is your business. So if another person does a job and it's not the way you do it, it's like, and now you're kind of messing <laughs> right. your name up. Yeah. Right. Definitely. Definitely. Um, so, and then as far as my team goes, like it, it took me years to find this team and wow. to build it, you know, just walk through the door. Yeah. It's tough. Um, so, you know, like you, you know, getting to the point of continuing to expand the team, it's going to take, you know, like the, it's, it, to it, add the right pieces. It's tough, man, because even like I said, even with myself building my team, man, I mean, we've been open for our gym, like what, nine, 10 years almost. And I've hired and fired and hired and fired. And yeah. I feel like just recently this year, I've got the right team and you never know. My How son, do you feel about that? If, I mean, it feels if, as far as having the right team, mm -hmm. it feels good, man. Cause I could do this. You know what I'm saying? I could come right. out and the gym's open People are working out, and I'm here doing this kind of stuff, trying to be able to develop something, an audience, something, to be able to help them still in a way eventually. You know what I'm saying? So right. these things are just uh, stepping stones of my business. But it feels good, man. It feels yeah. good uh, to know that, I mean, that it takes time because you actually care about quality. Definitely. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, for me, it's always been quality over quantity and different business models value quantity over quality. And, you know, mm -hmm. something's got to give, right? Mm -hmm. If you're trying to minimize your overhead – then you're compromising quality straight up. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, that doesn't mean go and, you know, spend in excess and, you know, like go and blow through an unlimited budget. But, you know, like, and it's something that my dad always taught me. My dad always taught me, like, instead of going to buy a bunch of cheap clothes, buy quality stuff. You know, like if you're going in with, with your dentistry too. My, my dad, you know, I remember when I was in dental school, he told me, like, look, you better go and learn from the most difficult professors in that school because – how you build your foundation is ultimately going to set the stage for the rest of your career. So if you're doing crappy dentistry and you're shortcutting yourself, that is the kind of dentist that you're going you're to become. Be. So you need to go and you need to, if, if there's like a professor that nobody wants to learn from because he's so hard on the students, you need to go with that guy. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's true. Here first, go to the toughest professor. Even if he fails everybody. Rate, rate my professor. They got like a one out of five. <laughs> do yeah. they still have that? Rate my professor. Yeah. yeah. That's what I would always do <laughs> <laughs> in college. You go to the easy way. Oh, man. That's crazy. So tell us a little bit about step outside of uh, the dentistry. Yeah, like what is your hobbies, man? Yeah, what do you like to do? Do you like bit. to travel? Pre-COVID like or during the pandemic? Let's go pre-COVID, man. Uh, yeah. Pre-COVID. Um, I love to travel. I really you know, me too, man. I love to travel, man. Where have you been, man? He's like, where have I not? Oh, yeah. God. Around the world, though. Well, already. it's like, you know, when you like to travel, it's like there's so many places yes. that uh, you want to go to. Um, honestly, like some of my favorite places that I've been to. Yeah, favorite. Let's go yeah, favorite places. Go yeah. favorite. All right. Uh, favorite places. I loved going to Greece. Um, and, and I. Sorry, we got to go. I was oh, going to yeah. go there on my third day trip to Europe, but oh. I, I skipped through that to hit a, a couple other countries instead. Really? But I, yeah. I loved, I, lo I loved Greece and Italy. I liked Argentina a lot too. It was different. Okay. It okay. was, it was, it was totally different. I mean, you know, like you go to like tropical places and stuff like that and you know, more or less like kind of yeah. the same, but I just, yeah. I really appreciate like the history and the culture. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, so yeah, like just experiencing new cultures. Um, it's, it's funny. Like I, I got into cooking. Okay, that's good. Hey, uh, hey, hey. Cook this too, guy bro. cooks good. Hey, hey, they're becoming friends yeah, right yeah. now, man. Hey, especially <laughs> Collab. Like, d during the, the, the pandemic. Little, cook, little cookie show? Yeah. yeah, man. I mean, like, I, I was going to, like, Sur Latav, like, here, and, like, taking cooking courses and stuff like that. Oh, but but during the pandemic, tired. like, I'm like, all right, well, you know, I could step up my cooking game a little bit, you know? Um, and Damn, that's I, what I should do, honestly. That's cool. I love self-improvement books and stuff oh yeah that's and, cool and, and man audio books like, and stuff learning, too. learning new skills man it's definitely like fun man that's why like i said this camera thing learning the videography photography just things like that man it's like it's great to learn it's man 
Where, Hobbies. What'd you say is the cooking the cooking courses you were taking? Uh, sur, the, sur la table. They have it at uh, at the Grove. I've been wanting to try some like that. I don't know if they're I, like, I want. Tell me right when you do it because I want to do it. Hey, yeah. it's fun. You you be, you be surprised. I'm tired of like, the basics. Tired of meal prepping. Yeah, it's like tired ground, of meal tur- ground turkey, white rice. <laughs> 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 I hate it. He's like now it's like a meatball <laughs> with t- some t- like tired of baked chicken yeah, and man. brown rice. Yeah, we can make a healthy broccoli. Yeah, I love I love hiking and working out. So hurry up and. Open that gym. Hey man, I got you, bro, for sure. For you sure. know what yes. I mean. I, I love doing that. I, I I was like working out since I was like 15 years old. Man. Okay. So for like the pandemic to hit and the gyms in LA being closed, dude, I never yeah. cycled in my life. And then I bought a Peloton. <laughs> oh, you got right? one at, the, at your house? Uh, yeah. And I'm like, oh man, is this gonna be weird? Like Is I've never sh- done this before. And you know what? It's fun. It's fun. Huh? Hey, I actually love the Peloton. Yeah, it's cool. I actually what, do. Which one's the Peloton? It's a cycle bike with the big TV. Oh, you got the TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going through Argentina. It's, it's, Argentina. Actually, <laughs> it's actually cool. No, I do the I do the courses with the instructors. The instructors are actually pretty cool. Um, I love working out. I love trying new things, man, and, and, and going out there um, and learning new skill sets and just self improvement. Like just seeing how I can c- just continually better myself as a person and like as a, as a professional. So you know what's you say you like self improvement books and, and reading books as well or podcasts or or audio books or what is it? Oh, I mean all of them. He's what's like launching on his podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. He's after this. So what's my new what, favorite? Right? Right? <laughs> Heck, what's a, what's a a book that you would recommend or audio book that you think? That's you know let, let, me, let me let me pull it up on my phone. Let's see what I what I've been listening to. Yes, uh, please. Recently. I got because uh, I like that stuff too, man. I think we're more related than. Yeah. <laughs> think, okay, man. so the, the latest book here I have right here, the uh, latest book, uh, audio book that I've been listening to. Like when you're in LA, you're stuck in traffic all the time, oh, yeah. right? So I was thinking, like, rather than just listening to music, why don't I just put on like an oh, audio book yes, or a yes, podcast, yes, right? Yes, um, got some knowledge. Yes, at least like you know, kill your time that way. Uh, it takes what it takes by Trevor Mo- Moad. I hope I said his uh, last name right. It's M O A W A D. Um, so he is like, uh, he's a guy who actually is like Russell Wilson's mental trainer. Okay. So basically setting like your mindset so that you're not thinking like overly positive and you're not thinking negative. You have a neutral mindset when it comes to things in life. Right. Because sometimes like, you can just tell yourself in your head, like, oh yeah, and this is going great. Yeah, You're yeah. overly excited yeah, and you just yeah. go with like, it or look, you're super down. Let's, you just... let's be real, especially in 2020, like things were not great for anybody. Right. Yeah, yeah. On a personal level, everybody yeah. was going through some kind of hardship. So you can't sit there and, and lie to yourself like, oh, but this is great. Yeah. You know, like mm-hmm. I so, love wearing a I've mask been, and I love going I've out. Been, uh, and, I've, you know, been, I've been at home for the whole year. I oh. feel great. You know, so you just got to like, you know, like uh, what I've been listening to uh, in that book is just maintaining a neutral mindset through adversity. So like that, that is like a really, really good book. Like the mama mentality, reading Kobe's book. Oh, yeah. you know, st- just just uh, stuff like that. Even I think uh, I was listening to uh Mark Cuban's oh, uh, okay. audio book. So th- those are like just kind of like, uh, this, you know, there's certain people in like business and whatnot um, that like I look to see like what they've come out with, if they've been on any podcast or anything like that. And I listen to that. Even, uh, I don't, I'm pretty sure you know that, that guy, David Goggins. Oh, yeah. The one yeah. that's, uh, yeah. That, military I, I got the bug. I read a, a little bit of it so far, but I love listening to podcasts. That guy's anytime. super hardcore. That guy's oh, like, <laughs> Don't be a bitch, kind of thing. You know, like you can't, you can't back Start down. Start crying when you're know. listening to. Uh, no, but the guy, that, his story, like from what I read so far, it was just like, oh, you guys shit. know, like in life, you're just gonna get kicked. Yeah, a oh, yeah. bunch of time, and you're All gonna right. go through like a lot of different stuff. It either makes you or breaks you. Definitely, especially, especially like when you're a business owner too. Oh, like oh, if yeah. you think you're gonna go and just open up a business and it's gonna be like, oh, you're just gonna be making a ton of money. That, that was me in 2017. <laughs> <laughs> well, trust me, I've had when I opened my business, I had times where I was like, my account was like negative, and I was like, how did this happen? Oh man. Oh, bro, like I had to move out of my apartment before when I was like first thinking I was doing good. I, dude, it was so many ups and downs to yeah. like even get to where, you know, we're able to do things like it's this. It's the so journey, man. That's what makes it so rewarding. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? And even like when you own your own business, like you got to look at it from the perspective of this. At least I do, right? Um, every time I work on a patient, I put my back against the wall. And I look at it as an opportunity. Is an opportunity to implement my skills to do the best work I can, Right. I mean, every time you guys get an opportunity to do something, it should be um, a way for you to display everything. Yeah, the best you can be. The man. best the best you can be. Yeah. Like, you know, like, 
um, whether it be like one client, right, for you at your gym. Um, I'm sure even like Ulysses is like with, with his cuts, right? Mm-hmm. Like you, you do one crappy haircut that just that's like, a wrap. Totally that's, that's why I tell everybody, man. It's like you can be the best trainer, the best whatever, every single day, but that one day that you're the shitty trainer, it's a wrap. Like everybody's gonna be like. Hey, even that sharp and dapper windbreaker you got going on is pretty fly, man. I noticed that too. Um, You know, so it's like I I look at it as every opportunity, and you just got to, like, I don't know. Always bring the fire, man. You just got to be humble about it. Yes. You know what I mean? Because, look, you can have your big break in one moment, and you can all come crashing down in another moment. So you just got to think of, like, your journey of, you know, how you got to where you are and um, how to keep pushing. How to keep pushing. Use that as motivation, man. I remember, like, those PBJ sandwiches and in, in, in the protein shakes. And he's like, like, he has a steak. He has a filet mignon on his plate. He thinks uh, PB&J. You know what? It sounds better. Let me get the PB&J. <laughs> you can't go wrong with well, PB&J, even, though. Even, <laughs> even, even, like, even, like, even like in dental school, like trying to go on a date, man. Like, hey, I have money to take girls out on dates. Uh, like, are you kidding me? You're like, Ugh. Like, I was... Uh, yeah, it's, it's expensive. Yeah, <laughs> if it's you're in that great. case, like yeah. even in college, like I was going just financial aid, but you know you're spending it on books and everything. I'm like, fuck, you know, books and housing and all of that. Yeah. you know, so you just got to use that as like remember those times and be like, look, I ain't ever going back yeah. to that. Yeah, yeah. fuck, you know. Mm. So like, if you put your back, if you if you operate from a, a mentality of keeping your back against the wall, the only direction you can go is forward. Yeah. So. Um, that's that's a, that's a that's a that's the quote of the day. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You heard that? That's gonna frame be that's gonna, be, that. that's gonna be the it's clip. Gonna be right there next time. A little frame. Keep your back against the wall because you can only move forward. Yes. There you go. Sir. There you go. You can't go backwards. You're already against the wall. Um, Damn, that's a good shit. one right there. Well, before we like wrap this podcast up, do you have anything to tell the audience? Something you want to put out I there? I think you just told them that. Keep your back. Oh yeah, you <laughs> did, huh? Yeah, just, remember that. <laughs> just, 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 just real just quick, real quick, since we were talking about 902 and on all these reality oh, shows. Yeah, hey, yeah. what if they came up to you like, hey, man, we want to do a reality show. What they have approached it? me about shows. They have? Well, I mean, not like my own show. They've, they've approached me about casting me on shows. A- MTV. Oh, man. Oh, The Bachelor. Are you married, kids, nothing? No, I'm not. No kids, nothing? No. Sheesh. No wonder they make fake accounts of you, man. Yeah. <laughs> that explains it. Dude. Oh, um, yeah. yeah, they approached me about these shows, and it's so funny because, like, I, like I told you guys earlier, I'm such a private person, so it's like I really got to put myself out there, and especially if like they're approaching me for like a dating show or something. Like, that's gonna be so weird. Yeah. Imagine like 20 females just there, like you know, wanting you. Like, I'll tell my sister about it, right? And she'd be like, "Hell no, you're not going on any of those shows." And then I'll go tell Monica and Gloria, "Doctor, you're definitely going on that show, <laughs> and it's gonna be great. And you should definitely do it. You just gotta take imagine. A, you just, gotta, cool. you just gotta have that'd a couple cool. drinks, and yeah. you know, like I'm like." So, you know, like, uh, if the right opportunity comes along, I'm not going to be on any, like... The Bachelor. Yeah. If it's The Bachelor. If it's That's the main one, huh? If it's That's the, the main bachelor. one people like to watch. You know what? Like, I've never actually watched that show. I know I know of The Bachelor. That's the one the ladies go crazy show. about. They love that show. Yeah, they love the Bachelor and the Bachelorette. Yeah, they yeah, they, uh, they call for Jersey Shore. Like uh, hey, Jersey we Shore. <laughs> we want to be Jersey Shore. I, I, actually, I was. Uh, I and was, right uh, when you're going, they're like, "Oh, uh, los chingones are going to be in the show too." <laughs> you start kicking it down. Oh man, that's, that's a wrap. You, got, you, you, you just got to be listening on this shirt. And then I'll just be wearing. We that. got you next yeah. time for sure. I'll wear it. That's for sure. Oh, sir. Uh, that's what's up, man. So uh, yeah, um, so we know that. Yeah, we, we know what we know. We, I, I got a lot of. A lot of good info from this fan. Yeah, the awesome, book, man. So the book. That's what it's about. Yeah. Awesome. It's good. It, as far as like the people listening to this, I mean, look, I never really go into my personal life and stuff uh, on my social media. It's more of like showing off like my work, the cases, my staff and all that, like in, in our dynamic. So this is like the first time I've actually kind of done something where I've talked a little bit more about my story. So there you go. You guys heard there it here go. first, man. Los right. Chingones podcast. How can they find you on social media? Do you only got Instagram or do you? You know, like, I, I had, like, a, a Facebook page, you know, but the more, like, I kind of, like, thought about it, um, it was just more, like, my profession is very visual. Yeah. So, like, I think Instagram is the right platform, at yeah. least for me. I know, I know, like, Blanca, I know Yvette was, You like, got a TikTok? You, that's what she said. You got to get a TikTok. Man. Imagine he's like, Bro, uh, you know how dances? many, like... It's because there's like a log, log they call it logarithm. Okay, that was So logarithm. you could get a lot more All right, so views. here's what I'm doing. I'm doing reels. Reels. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, okay. So that's almost, that's almost like a TikTok. That's pretty much like TikTok. It's similar because I have a little bit, I feel like, I don't know too much about TikTok, but I feel like I have a little bit more control over the reels, like how I can put like something together. Whereas like, you know, like, 
uh, TikTok, it's like you're like imitating like. And uh, then you got to put a trendy song bad. too. Yeah, and I'm not. I'm not about to do. Yeah. Like, I'm not about to <laughs> bust it. On, on you're like TikTok. digging. <laughs> hey, the bus. That's the that's the thing. It'll be stressing you out. Even when I yeah, I was trying to do some uh, TikTok, I was like, man, what the hell? Like, what can I do? The job in itself, man. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, you know. de yeah, definitely. But, but you already got the following, man. I think I, you know you got the support there. So I think we got we got some big things in yeah. store for 2021. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we we. Felt like we weathered the storm in 2020, mm -hmm. and I see that in 2021, so far it looks like uh, I think there's a little bit of a light starting to show through at the end of the tunnel. I think, you know, for everybody, you know, people listening to this, I think that there are signs that, you know, we're starting to kind of move in the direction where, yeah. you know, we're little by little going to start going back to normal. It's, it's um, starting to feel little nor more normal. Get the vaccine. Yeah, yeah. yeah get, get it. Get the vaccine. I got my yeah. second dose after this. Oh, okay. shit. You got it today? I, I, no, I'm doing it after this. So I'm not like, oh, my arm. And, you know, oh, whatever. yeah. Um, I, got, I got the first dose. I mean, it was totally fine. Like, all my staff, they, they all got their first dose. But today, they used me as the guinea pig, man. Anything in this office, uh, I'm I'm the guinea pig for. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure, put it on me. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I got the first dose. I'm Why getting not? my second dose immediately after this. Yeah. Um, so I want to make sure, like, I'm all good. You'll be good. Um, yeah, t uh, totally. You'll be good. You'll be great. <laughs> but, but 2021 is looking up. We got some. We got some big stuff in store uh, in 2021, um, and I'm looking forward to just continuing things with my team. And I love my team. Oh yeah. Gotta well, care for your team, man. If you got a team, take care of them. Yeah. Definitely. That first. Yeah, definitely. That's one um, thing in business, I guess you could say, is uh, take care of your team. They're gonna take care of you. Definitely. Like in my office, they're they're, they're my family. So for sure. And I think you know a lot of people can see that with with, with the socials. It's just the vibe here it's, already. It's, it's, that's it's, the vibe. It's, it's dope. It's, it, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. So you guys heard your new dentist in town, Beverly Hills. Yes. <laughs> Even if up. you have to drive a couple hours, Come it's see worth me. it. You know what? You will. I promise you, you will have an absolute blast here. You will have no other experience like it. As far as uh, what Oscar asked me in my socials, Instagram at NH Dentistry Beverly Hills. My website uh, NH Dentistry Beverly Hills dot com. You could also call our office three one zero six five nine five three nine nine. Uh, it sounds like I like memorized that plug. But I mean, like, like if you follow me on Instagram, I mean, you know, it's not your like typical dental page. Like you'll see my before and after work and stuff, but you'll see a lot of like the behind the, the scenes stuff. And, you know, my, my staff, you know, they all got their personalities. So if I'm not your favorite one, one of them will be a hundred percent. At you least go. a lot. A lot of people love Gloria and Monica, Rita, Barbara more than me. <laughs> oh yeah. Cause they're just, they just, a lot funnier, I guess. <laughs> as long as they, yeah, as long as they like someone in your team, yeah, yeah. That's all that matters, yeah, man. They'll keep, yeah. keep yeah, it goes a long way. Yeah, it's good. They'll, they'll love all of yeah. them. They'll yeah, love all of them yeah. for sure, man. Well, hey, appreciate you having yeah. us. I appreciate here, you man. guys. It was definitely. a good time. But that's a wrap for today's episode, and we'll see you next time. All right, stay you safe, guys. guys.